Hi, welcome to my YouTube channel. In this video, we'll be building a CI/CD pipeline that deploys a GitHub application onto AWS S3 bucket. The way this will work is we have a GitHub application deployed on GitHub. Whenever there is a change made to the GitHub application on GitHub, the CI/CD pipeline is triggered and it will build and deploy the application on S3 bucket. So we'll be using AWS Code Pipeline, which is a service for building pipelines on AWS and we're using S3 bucket for deploying the application. S3 bucket is a very good use case for deploying static websites on AWS. To follow this tutorial along, you need an AWS account and a GitHub application that will be hosted on GitHub. Most of services, the services that we're going to use in this video will be on the free tier, so we won't incur any charge in the process of this tutorial. Without much further ado, let's get right into it. We'll be using this GitHub project, this React project on GitHub. It's an analytics project. It's a project we used in a previous video on how to on how to implement Google Analytics in React. So we'll be using this project for the CI/CD pipeline. The thing to do now is to create an S3 bucket that we use for deploying our application. So at this point, you need to have your you have to have login to your AWS account and come to s3 bucket so you click on create bucket we want to create our bucket in the us1 region give it a unique name then we use the recommended acl keep the rest default for this we want to block all public access because we want to use our bucket for deploying our application that we want it to be available everywhere on the internet so we are clearly that we want to make everything public because it's a website, we want to make everything public. You can apply some tags, but we'll just leave everything default for now and we create buckets. So our bucket is successfully created. We we'll click on view details, see the details of our, our bucket. Now we have an empty bucket. So to make this work perfectly for our application, we need to have some property enabled. We'll go to the properties tab, come down to the static website hosting. So we need to enable static website hosting. This will allow our S3 bucket to be able to deploy, host our website. Click on edit. We want to enable static website hosting. We host a static website. We want this bucket to host a static website. Then the index document will be our index.html. And for now, we we'll use index.html for our error document also. So then we click on save changes. So we make these changes to our, to our buckets. Before we go, we still need to have one more changes. I'm going to add some changes to our permissions tab. We go to our buckets policy. We need to have update our buckets policy to allow traffic coming from outside. For this, we can use a sample policy that I've created on this. We can use this. This policy the json i will i'll put a link to this policy in the comments section so we we'll paste the the policy we we'll use the the bucket arn from this space just copy and paste that so what this is this policy is basically doing is is allowing all get requests that comes to this s3 bucket so that's what this policy is doing so after doing that, we click on save changes. So we make these changes to our application. So if you refresh this page, so our ST bucket should be showing this publicly accessible tag, which let us know that this bucket is now publicly accessible from anywhere. And if you come to the properties tab, you will see that when we enable our static website hosting, there's an endpoint URL that we can use to access our S3 bucket. So the next thing to do after creating our S3 bucket is to create a pipeline. So you can come to the, you can just search pipeline, code pipeline in the search box here. Code pipeline, you click on that. So yeah, I don't have any pipeline in this region yet. So I click on create pipeline. And just to, just to ensure that 
but I created the bucket I created in the North California region, the US one region. So we need to ensure that all our resources for this pipeline are in the same region. So I'm creating the pipeline in the North California region too. So I want to give a name to, to the pipeline. So the simple for analytics project. That's the name of my pipeline. You can use either version one or version two. There's no so much difference is that. So we want to use new service so it will automatically create a role for us for the pipeline. So we leave the others for default. We click on next. So where is the source of our code? Of course, we are going to be getting the code from GitHub. So we click on GitHub version two. We should use GitHub version two. GitHub version one is deprecated. Use GitHub version two as the source of our code. So is, you can either use an existing connection or if you, are, you, have, you are using for the first time, you can easily click on connect to GitHub and it will take you through some process just to authenticate your GitHub and connect it. It's an easy process, but for me, I have an existing connection, I'll use that. I'll click on this. So we can look up for our repository that I want to use. I want to use the analytics project this. So you can click on that. So when do you want, when do you want to trigger the pipeline? Whenever there is a push in a branch. So on which branch is that? We are using the main branch for now. So whenever there is a push in the main branch, this particular pipeline will be triggered. Then we can click on next. So we want to use build. So in the normal application, we need to build our application before we deploy it. So we'll be using AWS code build for, for building our application. You can use Jenkins, but for now we are going to use AWS code build. Which is more easier. You are, you are putting that in the same region. For now, we don't have an existing project. So we need to create a, a new AWS code build project. We we'll click on that to open up a new window to create your build projects. So you can give it a name, the same name with our pipeline with four analytics projects. Then the environment setup, we're going to use a managed image. Open system, let's just use Amazon Linux. Then the runtime, we use standard. The image, we use 5.0. Then we want to create a new service rule for us. We leave the rest as default. We use a build spec file. Build spec file is the, is the file where you state the command that you want to use to run your React application. It defaults what a build spec file by default. It look for a build spec .yaml file in your repository. If you if you did have one in your repository, you don't need to, it to just look for build spec .yaml file, or you can just insert the build command in this place. But for me, I have a build spec .yaml file in my repository already. I will show you that later. So I will leave it to use a build spec file by default. We don't want to use batch configuration. We want to have CloudWatch log so that you can see the process of building the application. If there's an error, you can easily see it from the logs. Then we can click on consent the code pipeline. So we've successfully created our code build project. Then we can click on next in our code pipeline deploy process. So the next stage is to deploy. Where do you want to deploy our application to? Want to deploy it to AWS S3. In the same region, you are looking for the bucket with the analytics project. That's our bucket that we created earlier. So we can either put ST object for boss world, want to extract file before deploy. So we want to extract the build file before we deploy it. So we'll click on this option. Then after that, we're going to click on next. So we can review our pipeline settings, the name, the pipeline type the source which is github version 2 the build stage and the deploy stage after giving you all this information we can click on create pipeline so our pipeline has successfully created and is already running it's pulling the the application from the source and it will go through the next stage to build it and then deploy it so one thing i want to show you is the build spec.yaml file this is what the build spec.yaml file looks like 
So it's very essential that you have the base product.tml file in your repo. It's, it goes through the phases of installing the application using Node.js. It's installed it using npm CI, then it's built it using the npm run build. And then the artifact, the artifact is, is brought out into this region and the base that it is to, to the disk folder. So you can either have it in your repo or you add it during your build stage. So I will, I will link the link to this build stage of YAML file in the comment section also. So our pipeline is still building that successfully pull the application, that successfully build it, and that successfully deploy it to our S3 bucket. So if you go to our S3 bucket now, from this static website, if you try to access this link, the application is now accessible through this link. So we'll be able, successfully able to deploy our application from the GitHub link to our S3 bucket. So anytime we make a change to our repo, let's say I come to the application here. Let's see, let's make a single change to the index.html. analytics project and then we'll come in the changes so if you go to our ci cd pipeline now if you try to refresh so the changes are triggered the pipeline again just by committing to the repo that's triggered the pipeline again and it has started building again so this is the concept of having a CI CD pipeline. Whenever you make a change to your repo, it automatically pick up the changes and deploy it on your S3 bucket, which you can access through the link here. So I hope you'll be able to find this video helpful.